Um, I work for a local startup. My name is Wayland, uh, data scientist. And, uh, a couple days ago, I was just uh, working on this talk, sitting around the office, and um, I sit in the same room, it's a startup, so I sit in the same room with the CEO, and he could tell I was kind of nervous and uh, about the talk. And he was like, you know what, dude, uh, how long is it? And I'm like, well, it's about 45 minutes. And he's like, how bad can it get in 45 minutes? And I'm like, challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I work for a startup. Um, I'm going to tell you the story today about another startup, what I did before the startup that I work at now. Um, and it is a story of, you God, I cut it off. It is a story of games, love, and what you can't see is how to go broke. So, uh, the story starts actually, um, I'm sure this is going here. The story starts actually several years ago, probably about four years ago. Uh, I had a kid, I just had a kid. Uh, I love her to death, she's awesome. But having a kid is very challenging. People in the audience who have children probably know that. Uh, so, and I just started a new job, totally going through a rough time. I'm like, okay, when I'm not taking care of my kid and trying to figure out this new job, I need something to take my mind off of all this, right? Something to help me get through. And I love games since I was, you know, like forever since the NES. Uh, Final Fantasy II is my favorite game. Anybody Final Fantasy? Yes, okay, awesome, you're in the right place. Um, so I'm like, okay, I need to find a cool game. But I go searching around on Amazon, I'm like looking at reviews, and like I spend a week doing this massive process, and it's just hugely painful. And at the end, I find an awesome game, and I still love it today, uh, Valkyria Chronicles, but I'm like, dude, you should, like, people need some relief here. They don't want to go through a week's worth of pain to get it, right? Okay, so. Fast forward a few, uh, a few years after that, and I'm working, I'm actually uh, working for a local company that's building a game, and we're building a game to train uh, CIA agents how to identify terrorists. So that was pretty pretty awesome, actually. Um, been lucky to work on some cool stuff. Uh, but you've probably heard horror stories about like game development, right? Like it's just like painful and work long hours. And so like imagine that plus a government organization, right? And that was the experience there. And I'm like thinking to myself. Like, how, how do you make this experience better, right? How, does, how can this get better? Um, kind of trying to tie these two things together. And I go to GDC, Game Developers Conference, and uh, there's this guy from Ubisoft. Uh, he's a game designer, and he's giving this talk about how to use psychology to design games. And I'm like, dude, I could so turn that into a recommender system that helps people find games. Like suddenly all this stuff comes together. So I leave my job making a game to train spies how to find terrorists. Uh, awesome move. And I start working on this thing. Um, and so I heard a node. Right, so this was like two years ago. And there was some cool, cool note stuff out there, but not nearly as much as there is now, right? Um, who here has ever heard of Etherpad? Anybody heard of Etherpad? Oh, wow, nobody's heard of Etherpad. So Etherpad is basically this um, real-time collaborative text editing thing, and somebody had rewritten it in Node and using Redis. And I was like, oh my god, that is exactly the tech that I want to use. So, um, I'm, I'm thinking back to this experience where uh, it was like so hard to find a game, like how do I do this? And what I thought was, what I really want is for this to be fun, right? Like I want, um, I want the process itself to be a game. And Node and Redis really, really matched, matched well with that. Uh, so Node, if, um, who here is familiar with Node? We'll talk a little bit about Node. Okay, so Node is basically um, super scalable. Uh, it was basically, so it was actually created 
uh, by Ryan Dahl to solve the Ajax download problem. So like it used to be, if you'll remember back in the old days, when you wanted to download a file, um, you didn't get feedback about progress in downloading it. So he created Node to solve that problem. Uh, but it turns out it's awesome at lots of things. It's highly scalable. Uh, it's a good solution to the uh, 10K problem. So if you've got 10,000 connections, it's, it's a good solution to that. Um, it also turns out it's good for making games on the internet. Uh, so that was good for me. OK, so quit my job, uh, move in with my co-founder, and just work on this thing night and day, and learning Node, because I've never used it before, and it was an amazing experience. Like, it sounds crazy, but it was just an amazing experience. Um, and six months later, we actually launched something. So it takes six months, um, sort of developing the game. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, getting all the stuff in Redis. Uh, so it's based on some vector vector math. I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, but I want to show you guys the short video of exactly what we launched with six months later. So it'll give you uh, sort of a better idea of what I'm talking about. So. Okay. It's dangerous to go. Okay. AV hacks here. <laughs> Blow and take this. We're going to click it. It's yes. like a game. Tell me, is this like you? I worry about things. So you can kind of rate that? it, you know, whether it's accurate it, or, or inaccurate. Very, sorry, very inaccurate, inaccurate, neither accurate and very accurate. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to answer questions just kind of about you. And uh, I do. I worry about a lot of things. I make friends easily. I think that's accurate. I have a vivid imagination. Yes, very accurate. I trust others. No, no. Why would you trust others? <laughs> accurate. So this, this is uh, I, uh, sometimes accurate. Whoa, here's what you need. Here's where you need those hearts. Okay, here we go. So we're going to go in, and we're doing like a little thing. This is going to hurt. Who do I want to save? I, I want to save Super Meat Boy. All right, so I saved one. I used a heart to save one. So it's kind of like a game. You're picking games that you want to save. It searches your Steam library. I've synced up my Steam library. I get angry easily. Neither. I love one. Okay. So that, um, thank you. I don't know if we can get the lights back on. So that kind of gives you, gives you an idea of, of what I'm talking about, right? So it's a game that, uh, so these things collect two different data sets and uh, the data sets actually get turned into vectors and the vectors go into Redis. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, so we launched with this thing, and <laughs> who here has ever been part of a startup? Who here is interested in startups? <laughs> um, so for about a month, almost nothing happens. I'm talking to my friends, doing it on Twitter, Facebook, nothing. That's not true. So we get, we get like, um, the story's about being interesting, I promise. Um, we get like 50 people in a month. And then I'm, I'm going to visit my mom. Uh, she lives about four hours away. And I'm, it's a four hour drive. I'm driving with my daughter. In the middle of this drive, so this, this video is actually part of a uh, longer video. And uh, it's done by a guy who's got, now he has like a million subscribers on YouTube, but at the time he only had and he was like, hey man, why don't I do a video for you? And I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. Um, and so I get this uh, text message halfway through this two hour trip uh, to my mother's house. Hey man, I just did a video and put it up for you. Um, and uh, so he's got like a million subscribers, right? So you can imagine kind of what happens next. Um, what, what actually happens next is I fear that this wonderful website that I spent six months on is going to go down. Uh, but uh, it turns out it doesn't, um, and sort of the reason it doesn't is um, just the week before, I'm going to talk a little bit about our, our node architecture now, just the week before I had started, um, so node, let me see, 
Node is essentially you can create a web server so that you don't need any sort of web server in front of it, like you probably heard of Apache. You can create a node server that completely replaces all of that, right? Um, super easy. Um, the last talk I did was actually creating a web server in Node in like five minutes. Um, so it's totally doable. So that's how we started out. Um, but we started on a platform called Nojitsu. I was a little bit concerned about performance issues there. So uh, I decided to transition to something called Joyent. Uh, and Joyent are the people who are basically sponsoring node development. So they hired Ryan Dahl, they hired a bunch of other people to, to do a bunch of node development. I thought, okay, surely they've got a nice stable platform for node. So luckily, I had just spent a week transitioning all of our code to node and setting up Nginx, Nginx as a proxy in front of node. So this is a good way to uh, actually run a production node server if you want to. Um, instead of serving all of your files from Node, you basically set up an Nginx server that will serve your static files, your CSS, uh, your JavaScript, all of your HTML. And the only thing that goes to Node is, uh, and you can do this with something in Nginx called a reverse proxy, the only thing that goes to Node are the uh, actual you know, computations, database hits, all that sort of stuff. So um, just spent a week doing that. Um, Luckily, the site did not go down. Um, but so we had 50 users on Friday, and on Sunday night, by the time I went home, I think we had about five to maybe 6,000 users. So that was a crazy weekend. Uh, I didn't have to touch the, touch the node architecture during this process because everything, everything scaled. Uh, perfectly. I think at peak we had something like 300 concurrent users. So uh, in me, in, in my mind, that basically fire tested Node as pretty a pretty awesome concurrent platform. Uh, the one problem that we did run into during this time though was uh, I was using Redis as my only uh, database, uh, which a lot of people will tell you is a bad idea. Um, so Redis, who here has heard of Redis? Redis is basically, so if you've heard of Redis, you've probably heard it compared to Memcache, which is most people's use case. Most people use uh, Redis to basically as a key value store to cache intermediate records. Um, we use it a little bit different. Um, but I was using it as my only database and uh, I was on a cloud hosting provider, and probably about an hour after the video went up, it's, so Redis is a, is a completely in-memory data store, and about an hour after the video went up, the memory was completely full, so I had to upgrade it. Um, and I subsequently had to upgrade it probably three or four times um, during, that, during that process. Uh, so that was sort of a pain point. If you're going to use Redis, be aware of that. Uh, it's a completely in-memory data store, so take that into account. Uh, most people would probably recommend that you not use Redis as your own database, actually. Uh, and, and I'm not recommending that. Uh, so, uh, and actually one of the first things that we did after this experience was migrate about half of the data out of Redis and into MongoDB. Okay. Um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about, so, so you, you saw this video here, and, and we're basically generating two uh, sort of high quality data sets, right? And initially, the algorithm was based on the, this talk by this, the research that was done by this game designer at Ubisoft. Like, basically, the basic idea is uh, people take a psychological quiz, and this is actually a real psychological quiz based on work from a psychologist at University of Pennsylvania. Um, and uh, so you saw the little thing where the games fall into the fire, right? That generates uh, high quality data about um, which games people actually care about, right? So you've got a bunch of your games, they're falling into a fire. Uh, you actually can't save all of them, you can only save some of them. So it's sort of analogous to a rating system, right? Okay, so initially, uh, we take these user personalities and we kind of project them onto um, an individual game, sort of giving a game a personality, 
right? Uh, so another interesting feature of Redis is um, a lot of people think of it like memcache, but it's not just the key value store. It's actually what I like to call um, a computational uh, data structure cache. So the thing about Redis is it's actually got data structures built into it. So you can store just a string, but you can also store lists, um, you can store sets, and you can store sorted sets. And the data that I just described happens to actually uh, map perfectly to the sorted set data structure. And that's because the data is actually in the form of a vector, which is very common in record number systems. Most of the production stuff that you work with is going to be vectors. So, you know, get comfortable with that. Um, so, it turns out that for, for the initial application, we could just store all of these vectors using the sorted set data structure in Redis, and then uh, the computation that you use is something called a dot product. Don't worry if you don't know too much about that. It's basically taking two vectors and smashing them together and getting a single result. So, and it turns out that you can use Lua in Redis to do that super fast. So, I think it takes about, um, we ended up doing about 10,000 dot products and with 50 dimensional vectors, and that takes about 100 milliseconds, I think. And the way that, that, the way that that can be so fast is you take your code, which is written in Lua, and it actually runs on the server, and all of your data is already in memory, and so that's why I call it a computational cache, because it's super fast, because it's all right there together. So, um, so uh, let's see. The rest of this adventure uh, is basically me, so now we've got all this data, right? And I'm like, okay, this is cool. I've got this uh, ghetto homebrew uh, recommender system, but maybe I should do something that's, you know, better. So uh, I started investigating machine learning algorithms, and I get into that. Uh, it's uh, pretty amazing. It turns out, who here has heard of the Netflix Prize? Netflix Prize? So the Netflix Prize is basically Netflix sponsored. They gave, they gave away a million dollars for people to improve their algorithm by like 10%. Okay, and the algorithm that come out, came out of that is something called matrix factorization. It's a category of algorithms called matrix factorization, and it uses a specific method of something called alternating least squares. So I'm like, yes, somebody paid a million dollars for that, I'm gonna use that. Um, so I end up building this giant uh, infrastructure in Python to do that, and uh, I'm very surprised to learn after doing that that the result that comes out of that is also these vectors, right? It's like the exact same thing. So I'm, I'm thinking to myself, this has got to be a coincidence, right? Like, there's no way. I just I must have just chosen this because it's going to give me the same stuff. No, it turns out um, the most sophisticated uh, recommendation algorithms, the production results are going to be vectors. I think I already mentioned that, probably don't need to say that. Um, so uh, getting that into our system is uh, super easy. Um, it's just so we've got this front end where we collect a bunch of data, goes into machine learning algorithms in Python, and then uh, we end up with a set of vectors represented in Redis that we can do dot products on to create recommendations in like 100 milliseconds, so that's awesome. I'm like, yes, uh, this stuff is going somewhere, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, turns out it, uh, it doesn't. Uh, so that's the, um, I, I want to encourage everyone to do a startup because it's awesome and it's a great learning experience. Uh, this is the sad part of the talk. Um, but it's not always gonna work out. So you need to plan for that ahead of time, right? Uh, what you will get out of it is an amazing learning experience. So like I learned more 
doing this in the past two years than probably any time since I was studying physics in college. Like it is that amazing of an experience. So even though you might end up totally broke at the end of the experience, um, I completely recommend it uh, as, as a way to go. Um, so I want to show this graph. This graph is very real. I want to thank, I think James, a friend in the audience, actually put me on the, the first version of this graph. Uh, so this is, um, this is what it's like. So this area here in the middle is actually referred to as the, the valley of death. So you get some initial spike. This is, God, it's just thinking back on it now, this is exactly what it's like. You get some initial spike, and then there's this long trough, and you have to figure out a way to get through that. Uh, sadly, I did not get through that. But um, the upside is, um, now I'm a data scientist for an awesome startup, and my uh, dev team is actually sitting here on the front row. They came all the way here from New York, so I wanted to do a shout out to them. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, do startups, they're cool. Um, even though it, uh, even though it's going to be hard, it'll it'll still be still be awesome. So I want to I want to leave some time for questions. I want to leave a lot of time for questions actually. So hopefully you guys you guys have some good questions. If you don't, I'll just talk more about random details because I can talk for a long time. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, so going to that experience, would you do something different now that you know kind of the outcome of all that or kind of do some things the same way? That's an awesome question. And it's a question that I've thought about a lot over the past uh, three months. Um, so I think the, the major thing that I would do different, and everybody says this, is um, try to sell something before you have something. So if you've heard of the lean methodology, that's kind of a major thing of that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say this, and it's going to sound ridiculous, but I feel like we were right on the verge of actually making money. Um, <laughs> um, so figure out how you're going to make money, and like pursue the, the, the eventual business model that we ended up with was basically something like um, uh, people who have games and they want to sell them, helping them sell their games, right? So it's sort of like a B2B business model. Uh, you have a game site, we can help you recommend things to your customers that you can sell on your site. Um, if I had to do it over, I probably would have started making relationships with those people on day one, instead of day 500. <laughs> so, yeah. Other questions? That was an awesome question, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. What's your favorite like recommendation or surprising recommendation that the system has made? So actually, um, I will not buy a game now, and it was just sad. I will not buy a game now unless it's rec recommended to be on the site. Um, and, and the reason that's sad is because the site is not on anymore. Uh, so I don't play games. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> um, I think. Um, it was surprising early on when it started actually working. Like, we integrate with Steam, so the, the site knew a lot about what I've actually played before. And when it started recommending uh, games which were my favorite that I played a lot that weren't actually in my Steam library, so we didn't know anything about it, I was like, whoa, that's awesome. Uh, let's see, uh, it's surprising recommendation. Uh, the, the thing that I recommended most recently is actually Rogue Legacy, which is an awesome game. You should check it out if you haven't played it. Uh, if you like Super Meat Boy by Neil Isaac, you'll probably like Rogue Legacy. Other questions? Yes, sir. No, kind of similar question before, but um, if you were to go through it again, what would you do differently from a technical standpoint? Um, so I would probably start out not using just Redis, but I would start out with a separate data store. Though, that's debatable, because it's like super easy to get started with Redis. I mean, it's got a nice clean API, 
and it's super fast, like you can uh, do a bunch of stuff. So it's easy to prototype stuff and get it ready. Uh, but maybe I would have switched over to a move, migrated a lot of the data to a secondary data store uh, much earlier if I had known exactly how things were going. Uh, so we ended up using Mongo, MongoDB as a secondary data store. Uh, it's pretty awesome as well. Uh, I've heard that it's got scaling issues eventually, but we never ran into any of those. It worked fine for all the, all the stuff that, that we uh, used. It's basically uh, a JSON-based document store. Super easy to integrate with Node. Um, it's funny though, if you end up doing one of these applications and you're sort of, you end up mixing, uh, I've seen other people encounter this, this problem too, and you end up mixing NoSQL data stores, this is possibly relevant to your question, Alex. Um, <coughs> what you end up doing is implementing a half-assed SQL layer in Node uh, that combines results from both of these things, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, there's actually a company called Clever out in San Francisco uh, that is doing some really awesome stuff in Node, and they've solved some of those problems pretty, in pretty awesome ways and, and published stuff on the internet. So if you're interested in that, uh, check out their blog. Other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, so I had a question about uh, your usage of Redis because it's not exactly a NoSQL database, right? So what was your like? How did you handle like having multiple columns connected to like the same like a user as a username, first mm -hmm. name, mm -hmm. last name? So um, this kind of ties in with with the previous question. Um, eventually, that stuff just moved into a JSON object in MongoDB. Your question is how do you do it in Redis? Um, and the answer is take a JSON document, serialize it into a string, and store it as a string in Redis. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty pretty common, actually. Uh, yeah. uh, not, not the greatest solution. Mongo is obviously the greatest solution. Excellent question. Uh, and it's funny. Uh, I just had a meetup last week, the topic of which was uh, what is data science and what is a data science? Because there's a new OKC group. Uh, uh, I'm actually an organizer. Oh, you are. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but, but I'm happy to answer your question. Uh, um, so day to day, uh, what I actually work on is a lot of natural language processing. Uh, we actually deal with Pinterest data a lot. So we're sort of, this is a much harder problem, but we're sort of getting into image analysis, kind of testing the waters there, uh, what that does. Um, there's also a lot of just, this is not glamorous, but you just look at the data and Yeah, it, was, it ended up being a big model. Yes. What feedback or reviews did you get? Uh, so we actually used a program called User Voice for uh, reviews, and that's basically people can click on this little thing on the side and type uh, whatever they want about your site, give a rating, all that. Um, it was a mixed bag, honestly. Um, 
some people were like, oh my God, I can't believe you just wasted 15 minutes of my life. <laughs> and some people were like, oh my God, this is amazing. I can't believe that you built this thing, right? And I actually printed out both of those things and I set them on the wall in front of my desk just to remind me this, this can go either way, right? Like, opinion is, is gonna be divided no matter what you do. So, but, but, but generally positive. How big was your team? What, what was the makeup? Uh, it was mostly me <laughs> and me. Uh, actually, I had a co-founder, and he did. He actually did the database migration from Redis to Mongo, for which I am eternally grateful. Uh, but he had a day job, and I did not. So I ended up doing probably 90, 95 percent of the work. So, if I had to do it over again. I would actually not do it by myself, but that's a, actually a much harder problem to solve than it actually sounds like initially. Uh, finding, finding and building uh, a network of co-founders is like huge. If you ever want to do a startup, find awesome people, do stuff with them. That's one of the reasons why I'm so involved in the community, because I want to find all the awesome people and do stuff with them. So that next time, somebody on my back. <coughs> So if you're interested in doing awesome stuff, <laughs> yeah. Did you guys ever consider using Ruby for your database needs? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, just language in general. Okay. Um, I I mean I when I when I started the project I made it sound like no it was just the obvious choice but I did actually examine alternatives. Uh, I experimented a little bit with Ruby. Um, I like the fact that so one of the major draws of Node for me is. Like I'm writing this thing by myself, right? So I'm doing the front end JavaScript work, I'm doing the server work. If there's machine learning work, I'm doing that as well. And having the same language across as much of that stack as possible is actually a huge benefit. Like it's easy to, un it's easy to underestimate, but that context switch between working in JavaScript here and working in something else here, that's actually huge. If you're doing those same, if you're doing those two things, in the same day and switching back and forth between them multiple times a day, it's a huge benefit. So uh, there was that. And also, like I wanted to make a game and the web sockets integration <coughs> stuff in Node just makes that so much easier. Uh, yeah. Awesome question. Yeah, I think we've got time for maybe one more question. Uh, how did you get from doing this game to becoming a data scientist? <coughs> uh, awesome question. Um, I have no idea. <laughs> um, so, I guess a big component of making this, making it actually work, is uh, the machine learning stuff. And I, there's a whole I could do a whole other talk on that. Probably should have talked. But um, like there was a whole journey there, right? Started out in MATLAB, did stuff in R, uh, eventually ended up in Python, and it was just a huge learning experience for data analysis. And there's so much data analysis that went into this story. Um, uh, looking for trends, cleaning stuff up, and then building a production. Uh, first prototyping a recommender system in Python, and then building a production recommender system. Um, uh, yeah, so I guess that's so I'll have for me. How are we on time there? Okay. <laughs> you got plenty of time. Oh, well I thought we only had two minutes left. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Uh, other questions? I can talk more. Oh, you have a question. Oh, right. I totally misunderstood the signal. I'm sorry. <laughs> one, of the, one of the person who's, who's running the event and is giving signals about how much time left has questions. <laughs> so uh, you mentioned using Lua to supplement your Redis queries. But for the, the, those, those of us that aren't familiar with that, what does that do for you in terms of performance? Or what, what does that do that you couldn't do with JavaScript? So right, so that's actually that's actually why it's awesome, right? I, um, you you actually, you can write scripts that execute uh, on your Redis server in Lua, right? And 
the, the awesome thing about that is Lua has this really amazing JIT that gets C comparable speeds, and that's kind of built into Redis. So all your uh, code basically gets cached and JITted uh, just in time compilation for people who don't know JIT, I'm sorry. Uh, which, which make things super fast. And all that stuff, that code is executed right next to the uh, data that you're storing in Redis. So it makes operations super fast. Uh, the alternative that you're describing is basically you'd have to get everything out of Redis, do all your computations in JavaScript, and then uh, uh, and then display or, or feed the results, which is not going to be fast. Okay, I think I'm done. Thank you all very much for coming. I hope you